Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another of our Double Shot interviews and I'm joined by Dan Bell, who's the Head of Corporate FX at HiFX. Welcome in, Dan. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks, Gareth. Dan's here to talk about the world of currencies. We thought we'd uh, have a little bit of a wrap up of 2014 and then look ahead to what we can expect in 2015, which is just around the corner now. Um, now, Dan, it's, it's been a very eventful year this year. Um, we've had some pretty interesting things going on, a, a pretty wide range, trading range for the New Zealand dollar, um, down to, you were saying, it's a two and a half year low today against the, the greenback, 76 sort of cents. Yep. Um, it's been up to 88 cents. We've had Reserve Bank intervention. We've had, had, had everything, really. Yep. Um, what would be some of the key, you know, pick out, say, three or four of the, the key factors that you would, um, would take from this year? Sure, yeah. I mean, it, it has been a, another interesting year, and as we used to say, ne never a dull moment in the, in the world of currencies. Um, and we forget that um, the New Zealand dollar versus the US was trading over 88 cents earlier this year, uh, and obviously the Reserve Bank in New Zealand uh, intervened and, and sold a, a significant amount of New Zealand dollars to try and bring that down. We're trading around 76, we traded to a low of 76.24 cents overnight, um, which is uh, the lowest that we've been in over two, two and a half years. So when you look at uh, 88 all the way down to 76 cents, that's, that's a pretty big range and, and obviously that has a, a pretty significant impact on the cost of, of imported goods into New Zealand and obviously the returns that our exporters are getting if they're selling in US dollars. So definitely a, a, another volatile year. Um, I think the key themes um, this year, again, commodity prices, we've seen dairy prices pretty much halve from their highs earlier uh, in the year back in February so dairy prices um, putting a, a significant um, significant downward pressure on the New Zealand dollar although the New Zealand dollar has lagged the drop in, in, in dairy prices so we're seeing a bit of catch up at the moment uh, and obviously what's happening in the world of monetary policy and uh, as we all know the US Federal Reserve have, um, have finished their quantitative easing program um, and are starting to talk about raising interest rates next year and that will continue to be uh, a key driver into 2015. Yeah, so as we go into 2015, you've, you've mentioned commodity prices, it's been a huge factor this year. Oil price is the one that's probably front of mind as the year ends. Yeah. Um, well, how big of a factor is that going to be next year? Well, yeah, I mean, oil prices, um, you know, we've just, uh, we've seen a huge decline in oil prices this year, um, pretty much off, um, you know, the WTI and the Brent price um, off close to 40% uh, year to date. So, um, you know, trading just under $65 a barrel, I think, today, which is just a huge drop uh, in a pretty short period of time. So if you go back to, um, you know, go back to a few years ago when oil prices were trading well over $100 a barrel, Obviously you've seen a lot of investment into the energy sector around the world, whether it's shale gas or, or, um, or LPG or, or other sources of energy, and a lot of that investment has been, um, been done on the basis that oil prices, are, you know, which are the benchmark of, of, of energy, were going to be over $100 US a barrel. So it's going to be a challenging year, I think, for the, for the energy sector next year and commodity prices in general. Um, and that could that could cause a few issues. I think that could create uh, a bit of quite a bit of volatility potentially in that in that sector in the equity market, um, and, um, and and potentially be a bigger bigger issue than what it's already what, what it's being talked about at the moment. So um, we'll we'll see how that plays out next year. Now you mentioned the the Fed obviously the the bond buying, quantitative easing, money printing, whatever you want to call it, obviously ended. <laughs> And all eyes have now sort of turned to whether, if and when they raise interest rates next year. Um, I guess in an environment with with a with a soft oil price, that, that might push things back a little bit on on that time frame. Um, yeah, I, I guess you know softer oil prices um, will will continue to see a lower inflation outcome, and you know obviously you've got uh, various policymakers around the world world continuing to be concerned about deflation. Um, so lower oil prices could feed through to that. Obviously lower oil prices in the US is good for the US consumer. Um, we know that they love, uh, you know, love their big cars and, and obviously um, a lower, lower gas price means they've got more money in their pocket to spend on, uh, on retail. So that's positive for the US economy. So on one hand, um, you know, lower oil prices may see a lower inflation outcome but also continue to be good for the US economy in other ways. Um, 
I think the US are, are well on the path to um, normalising um, monetary policy. I think um, you know it's it's been a long time coming. Look, I mean this is years and years in the making. Um, they've been telegraphing this for a long, long time, and uh, I think they've given the market plenty of. Uh, plenty of time to realise that um, interest rates in the US are not going to be at zero forever and ultimately we are going to start to see them normalise interest rates. Um, it doesn't mean that we're going to see the Fed funds rate go from you know, zero up to three or four uh, percent in a short period of time but I think we, we're certainly going to see them start to raise interest rates probably from June next year and that's obviously already been, um, been flagged. And obviously complete opposite sort of scenario to, to the US is Japan where, where they're ramping up money printing. Um, yeah. Europe, obviously Europe still, um, the picture there is still pretty grim in That's the right. economic picture in, in, in the Eurozone. Um, I guess China a little bit uncertain, the, the economy there is slowing a bit, bit of concern about um, uh, the, the non-bank sector there and the banks even um, yeah. in, in some quarters. Um, I guess the broader picture, what's that going to mean for, for, for currencies next year? Yeah, we, we're certainly seeing divergence uh, in those those large global economies. Um, the US um, continues to look um, like like the best place to be investing in 2015. Um, there, the US employment report released last Friday, coming in at um, the non-farm payrolls number coming in at three uh, over 320,000 new jobs for the previous month, uh, and an unemployment rate of 5.8%. Um, you know, compare that to the Eurozone uh, or Japan and there's just no comparison. So, um, you know, we're continuing to see this um, unconventional um, monetary policy um, approach from the, uh, from the Japanese and they're, I mean, they're going to be taking their, their own um, central bank's balance sheet to, to over 100% of GDP uh, within the next few years. So it's just a, a massive uh, expansion of, of the central bank's balance sheet there far surpassing the uh, the Fed in terms of uh, the percentage of the economy that it represents. Um, and obviously the, the European Central Bank, um, as we know Draghi uh, has, has, has been trying to um, give the market plenty of confidence that he will continue to do whatever it takes to get their economy on track. So um, I, I think we are going to continue to see um, the ECB trying to um, stimulate their economy through, through monetary policy into next year. Um, hopefully that, that, that does in turn um, create some, some upside for, for, the, for the European economies and, and obviously Japan as well. But um, certainly the way the US is going, um, we're, we're expecting the US economy continue to, to look pretty good next year. And, and back in, in this part of the world, we've got an interesting dynamic with the potential for interest rate cuts from the Reserve Bank of Australia next year. Um, whereas the likelihood here is probably the Reserve Bank will, will, will do nothing in terms of the OCR next year. Yeah. Um, where do you see the New Zealand dollar going next year, I guess, against some of the, the key other currencies, the Aussie dollar, the, 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 the US, etc.? I think against the US dollar we're going to continue to see the New Zealand dollar struggle uh, on the basis of, of broad US dollar strength. Um, Against the Australian dollar, I think, um, as you mentioned, the Reserve Bank of Australia uh, look like they could potentially cut interest rates in Australia. Um, so their cash rate is at two and a half, obviously ours is at three and a half. If we see them down another 25 to 50 basis points, the difference between the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar uh, interest rate environment um, continues to favour New Zealand. Um, so we could see the New Zealand dollar, we're, we're trading around 92 cents or so at the moment. Look, you know, we could easily be trading over 95 cents and, and obviously, you know, then you start talking about parity, particularly if we continue to see the weakness in iron ore prices like we've seen this year, where iron ore prices are down 50% and we know that, that that's Australia's largest export commodity. Um, whilst Australia's seen a pick up in their housing market, other parts of their economy are still pretty weak. We've got some analysts calling the Australian dollar versus the US um, under 80 cents into next year. Um, the New Zealand dollar versus the US, I, I think we could easily see 70 cents for the Kiwi US. Under 70 is probably a little bit of a stretch, but um, you know, in a, in a broad US dollar strength environment and normalisation in their interest rate um, policy, that could, could easily be possible. And obviously the, the Kiwi will probably remain strong against the, the yen and, uh, and the euro, uh, given what's going on in those regions. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> And how about the pound? We yeah, well, the, ag that again against the uh, against the yen, I think that's um, I think we're going to remain strong against the yen as the the Bank of Japan continue their their um, their approach to monetary policy. 
against the euro and the pound. I don't know if it's as clear cut there. I mean, obviously, we've got a stronger economy than Europe. There's no doubt about it. We've got higher interest rates. Um, you know, things are certainly uh, a lot better in New Zealand. But it will be interesting to see what this strength in the US dollar does to the overall um, investment um, climate next year. And I think. Um, I just think the market again is a little, uh, uh, you know, is a little bit behind in terms of catching up with the fact that, you know, a lot of emerging um, uh, emerging economies have been uh, issuing bonds in U.S. dollars. They've been, um, you know, raising debt in U.S. dollars. So if you continue to see strength in the U.S. dollar, and these these businesses aren't growing as much as they uh, would have liked, then um, that could create some real issues for the emerging uh, emerging economies um, of the world and potentially a bit of uh, volatility and a bit of risk aversion could weigh on the New Zealand dollar more than it weighs on the likes of the pound. So uh, I'm not convinced we're going to see a lot of strength in the New Zealand dollar versus the pound next year. I actually think that um, that we've probably seen a top there. We got up to a high of around 0.56 against the pound this year. We're trading around 0.49. Uh, I, I think we're, we're, we could easily see it back around 0.45 uh, into next year. Against the euro, it's, it's probably going to remain steady around 0.6. Um, and against, uh, as I mentioned, against the yen, we're going to continue to remain strong as they continue to print uh, print money until the cows come home. Absolutely. Mm. Well, thanks a lot for that, Dan. And obviously, it's going to be another interesting year in 2015. And I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.